over the ocean and it's moving this old way. If your soul not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. There's a storm out over the ocean and it's moving this old way. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away, drift away, Lord, drift away, Lord. You will surely drift away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Help me say it. There's a storm out over the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. There's a storm out over the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away, drift away, Lord, drift away. You will surely drift away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely Some folks ain't drifting away, they're walking away. But I praise God for being anchored in Jesus. Amen. Anchored in Jesus. Amen. We praise God for you on tonight. Amen. We praise God for him being so good to us. For we serve an awesome God. And, and, it, and it kind of makes me think about, amen, that was Though the storms keep on raging in. My life, yes. and sometimes it's hard to tell my night from day. Oh, but the hope that lies within, I'm reassured. Thank you, Lord. Yes, as I keep my eyes upon. The shows I know he'll lead me say led to that blessed place he has prepared. Here it is. And if the storms don't cease, just in case the wind. the 
Lord. You know sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed. Yes, we are. By the winds and the currents that seem so fierce. This is what my hope is. But in the Word of God, I've been anchored. Yes, I have. And keep me steadfast, unmovable, besides the tide. Yeah, 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 yeah. The storm don't cease. Sometimes it don't cease. Just in case the wind keep me right on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Amen. I praise God. I praise God. I praise God. I praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeah, there's a storm out on the ocean. Yes, it is. But my soul yes, is anchored. Anchor. It's anchored yes. in the Lord. Amen. And the closer it gets to land, yes. the more I know, I know, I believe that God is going to keep me. Yes. Oh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Oh, taste and see yes. that the Lord is good. Yes. Sweeter than the honey that's in the honeycomb. I was glad when they listen, I don't need no tragedy. I was glad when they said unto me, I don't need nobody in the hospital. I was glad when they said unto me, not because I had a bad accident. I was glad when they said unto me, not because I lost my job, but I was glad when they said unto me, let's go. Let's go into the house of the Lord. I tell you what, it's nothing like the house of the Lord. How many of y'all, you pray in your house, you read in your house, you study in your house, you fast in your house. Ain't nothing wrong with your house, but it's something about the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm thinking about Solomon when he prayed and said, Lord, I just want you to give me wisdom how to go in and out before your people. But then Solomon prayed an awesome prayer for the people of God. He said, Lord, I want if the people just look this way, whether they are a stranger, whether they are a saint, whether they are a member, if they look towards the house of God, look at somebody and say, I just look this way. But I tell you what, better than looking this way, when you can come. Oh, my. Oh, when we can come. Amen. And somebody said, I came running into the house of the Lord and wasn't nobody after me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah when, when the opportunity presents itself. Amen. I miss you all. I miss the saints of God. I, I don't care how we do by ourselves and how well we've done by ourselves. It's nothing like being around the believers, the saints, those that love God, those that serve God, those that give God time. You can't do this by yourself. It's nothing like embracing. Hello, somebody. I don't care what they say. Listen, I'm embracing my sister. I'm embracing my brother. I trust God. Hallelujah. If we can't trust God with us, who can we trust? Hallelujah. We can't trust nobody. Amen. They tell you even after you get through taking, amen, the vaccine, you still can get it. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We better trust God. Yeah. Yeah. After you yeah. take your second dose, you still can contract the virus. Yeah. You yeah. better trust God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, yeah. but a power, love, and a sound of mind. Yes, God, I Praise you. I magnify you. I give you the glory. Hallelujah. I give you the honor. Because you are the awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. I thank God. Hallelujah. I thank God for my life. Hallelujah. I thank God for his covering. I thank God for his protection. Thank God for his guidance. Thank God for his direction. 
That's why we sang that song, Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus. Can't Nobody Do Me Like the Lord. Would you say, Nobody? Hallelujah. Nobody can do me like God can. So we praise God on tonight. Just the opportunity to tell God thank you for one more day. That's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Let me say this before we get started on tonight. You know, it is something about God's house. God's house is a special place. Listen, we know that we know that the building means nothing, but it's who will worship it, it's who will serve it, it's who will reverence it, it's who will honor it. That's what makes this house set aside. See, in other words, I may have blessed my house, but it's not set aside like God's house. No, it's not. Hallelujah. God said, listen, I established this place and my heart shall be there perpetually. It's something about the place that has been designated for the house of God and for to worship God. It's nothing like it. Nothing like it. It's nothing like it. I feel good at home, but it ain't nothing like feeling good in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you. I feel like the saints are old. I just feel different when I get in the house of the Lord. I feel different. Even when I felt bad, I feel different when I get into God's house because it's just something about the presence of the Lord. Huh? The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. So I praise God for it. You know, uh, the people used to tell me on my job, they said, Moses, how do you get up excited all by yourself? I said, I don't need nobody to turn me on. I, I got God to do it. I can do it by myself. That's why David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. When God has been good to you, you don't need nobody to say amen. You don't need nobody to pump you up. When you look back on your life and see what God has done for you, nobody got to tell you the same. Nobody to tell you to pray. Nobody to tell you to worship because he's been good to me. I'm worshiping God for what he is to me. I don't know what he is to you, but I know what he is to me. And that's why I open up my mouth and I say something. Hallelujah. I open up my mouth and say something because of what he's been to me. See, when I step before God, he's going to judge me for how I served him. Amen. I know that's right. He's not going to judge me according to my corporate worship when I came to church. On, no, no, it's long before I come here. It's what I don't do here. Uh, it's what God really honors. It's what I don't do here. Amen. It's what I do at home, what I do in the street while I'm going wherever I'm going. It's worshiping and magnifying God. So we praise God on tonight. We thank God. Amen. We know that our salvation is not a feeling, but it does make you feel good. Yes, yes, it does. Thank we know our salvation is not an emotion, but you do have emotions. Yes, uh, I praise God for it. Amen. And I, no, you may not have emotions all the time, but it's impossible to serve God and not have some emotions sometimes. It, it, it's impossible to serve God and not and not, not get emotional and get loud. It, it's just impossible to serve God and keep your mouth closed all, right. all the time. All right. All right. And sometime or another, you just got to open up your mouth and scream and holler and say something. That's why I, I laugh at my mom when we go to Amen. The doctor now she go to the doctor and she get a doctor report. She scream and holler right there in the doctor's office. She said, "Doctor, excuse me." She go and get a little shout on right there. Listen, listen. She understand that the doctor is not guarding her life. And the report that he given didn't come from him, but it came from God. And I let him know that too. Say, excuse me, doctor, but 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 I know what you said. But I know this is the Lord's doing. The Bible said it's the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous. In our eyes. <laughs> Woo! So, honey, we just have to let the doctor know, listen, God is doing, he's taking care of me. Watch this. I thank you. Thank you for your service. For identifying what God already knows. <laughs> I thank you for telling me what God already knows. Now that I know, the only thing I'm left to do is to leave it where it is. Look at someone say, leave it where it is. When you have identified something that you did not know what it is, then when you identify, look at you tell somebody else, leave it where it is. God already knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just new to you. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. It may be new to the doctor, to the science that's discovered it, but it ain't new to God. No, it's not. Right, right, right. He tells us his eyes of the Lord is in every place. Ah, uh, beholding the evil and the good. If anybody know, God already knows. That's why as we look at the word of God, that's why we ought to get relief and comfort through God's word because God already knew. Sister Jewel, you don't have to faint and fall. Oh my God, what, what? Oh my God, why you saying oh my God? It is oh my God, God already knew. It just, it just causes us to say, do you really trust the God that you say you really trust? Do you really believe in the God you say you believe in? So when things happen to us, it challenges our faith. See, everything that happens to us, it, it challenges our faith. Amen. It never says what God isn't. It says what your faith should be. Yes. See, see, whatever comes our way, it's not a question of whether or not it's God or not God. It's a question of it's challenging your faith that you say you have in God. Do, do I only believe God because the land is dry? Do I believe God when it's stormy? <laughs> when I believe God when the flood is coming? Do I believe God during the drought? So everything about what we go through as believers, it challenges your faith. Amen. God, God, God is God is, is simply saying, let your faith do the talking because you say That's right. with your mouth yeah. that you believe. That you believe. Now trust me, trust me with your heart. With your heart. <laughs> oh my. Look at someone say, I trust it with my heart. I trust, with my whole heart. I trust God with all of me. Yeah. Praise God for being here tonight. Uh, we're going to go into another study at the beginning of the year the message that the Lord gave me that I, that I preached and uh, we were not back in setting when I preached on God hid my future in my struggle God hid my future in my struggle and so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a series on this I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about God hiding my future in my struggle we're going to deal with how God manifests himself through our lives through the struggles that we have, that we feel that God don't care, that God oh. is not around us, God has dissing himself, but everything that we're going through is building your future. That's right, you know what he's doing. Everything you're going through is good. See, the one thing that God has promised that nobody can take is we have life eternal. That's right. Nobody. Now, besides life eternal, everything else, Brother Jackson, that we get in this life is simply a benefit. But the guarantee is eternal life. See, Jesus died that I may have eternal life, not a better living on earth. That's right. That, promise it, that, 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 that wasn't the promise. And, and some of us have better living than others. Some of us, but, but that doesn't even mean that God loved one more than the other because what he died for. See, I, I tell people all the time, I say, you stop confusing what he died for with what you want. Right, Hello, somebody. I'm going to leave God because I didn't get what I want. God didn't die for you to get what you want. God, Jesus died for you to get what you didn't deserve. That's eternal life. And that's eternal life. To put man back in right standing with God. When Adam and Eve lost that relationship with God in the garden, God vowed that he would make it possible for man to come back to him. And he knew that man couldn't find him because man didn't know where God was. Nobody looked for him. Uh, and God ain't lost, you were lost. And God simply reveals himself who he is to let us know that he's there. So the time Adam and Eve left the garden, God started the plan of reconciling man back to him. He knew that ultimately Jesus Christ had to come, had to go to the cross, had to go to the grave, had to die, had to rise again, and sit on the right hand of the Father. He did that because he said, I want to make it where you can get back to me. Right. And he did it. Oh, we can get Thank back you. to God. Thank That's why in that same trial, he said, you come boldly now. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price. That nobody else can pay. Right. 
I don't owe no one nothing but God. I don't owe anybody nothing but God. And the fact that I have God on my side, I have everything. God made it so as we get in the world tonight. He said, listen, before my word fails, and then, and everything else is fake. Before one jot or tiller of my word fail. Oh, thank you. What he said, heaven, heaven and earth. Just so, God said the guarantee that what I have is real, you're going to see the earth pass away first and the heavens fall. Before my word fail. My God, I'm going to tell you something. That's a powerful word. God said, matter of fact, everything that exists will no longer exist. Then even watch this. How would you know that my word fail if everything that I made stopped existing? See, man can only count on what he see, what he feel, what he can hear, and what he can taste. When all of that is gone, man has nothing. But God said, when there is nothing, I am yet something. <laughs> because he said, I am everything. As a matter of fact, before all of this existed, God said, I still was. Right, 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 right. <laughs> God said, I didn't just exist because of what you see now. Before this came, I was. And when all of this leave, I am. Uh, so when he told Moses to tell Pharaoh, said, what, what Lord, what should I tell him who your name is? He just said, tell him I am. I am. What kind of name is that I am? Yeah. What, 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 I am? I am what? Well, what, wait, what's the thing? Watch what God, I'm trying to get to it. Watch what God was trying to do. Tell Pharaoh I am. And no doubt he was scratching his head. And the wise men and the musicians and the wizards were scratching their head. So what kind of name is I am? Well, before time ended. Hallelujah. Uh, before those ten players came along, God began not only to show Pharaoh who he was, but he began to show Israel who he was because Israel really didn't know who God was. And Moses really didn't know who God was. But God said, I'm going to show everybody who I am. Tell them my name is I am. Yeah. Woo! Uh, I am. And I tell you what, when God got through, they didn't have to question who I am was anymore. They knew who I am was. He, man, he is everything. Huh? He calls frogs. He calls a grasshopper. He calls loaves. He calls blood to come. He calls death to come. He, 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 he turned the rod into a snake. And then Aaron picked, Moses picked Aaron, picked that thing up by the tail and it came back. Listen, God said, I am. And when we think of the awesomeness of God, we think of him as I, I am God. What is the I am God? I, I don't know. Maybe this is the lesson of tonight. The I am God is saying that I am your everything. When you decide that there was a need, that there was a problem, that there was an issue in your life, God said I am. You don't have to pray about it. God said I am whatever you need. That's who I am. I am. Why are you trying to look for someone to fix what the problem is? God said, I am. Why are you looking for an antidote? Why are you looking for a prescription? God has declared, I am. And that's why, listen, that's why some of us are more blessed than others because some of us have brought that thing and we have embraced what God has said. I am. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to stress. I don't have to worry. I don't have to be all complex and all wore out and tore up. I realize that I serve and I am God. And listen, because I was bought with the price, I'm no longer my own. I belong to God from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Everything that happens to me happens to God. Amen, Jesus. Look at someone and say, everything. That happens to me happens to God. That's why God, He said, I am. And that's why God said, Whatever happened to you, it doesn't matter because I am. 
That's why God let us live with certain things. God let us deal with certain things. He don't take every trial away because God said, let me show you. See, sometimes we declare how big God is because he removed the mountain. But God said, let me prove to you something. I don't need to remove the mountain. God said, I'm bigger and I'm greater than the mountain. Let me show you how great I am. You say you can't climb it. But God said, he that wait upon the Lord, I shall renew his strength. God said, let me prove to you where there is nothing to hold on to. God said, I am. You got something to hold on to. You're walking up and look like there's nothing to hold on to. Somebody is wondering what's pulling you up. God said, I'm on the other side. It's me pulling you that way. He said, I am. Hallelujah. I fall down and somebody see me reaching out to a hand that they cannot see. And somebody said, what are you reaching for? God said, I am. Oh, my. Can you imagine falling down and you reaching up? It look like somebody's pulling you and somebody's looking and saying, who's pulling him? The I am God. Look at somebody and say, I don't pull me up. That's why, that's why when folks said you can't make it and you can't take it, and that's why when they think they set traps to trip you up and to make you fall, God said, I am a restorer. I'm a restorer of the breach. I'm a repairer of that that's broken, that that's been destroyed. God said, I replace it. The I am God. And when we look at how he says, listen, that's why I tell you to set your focus on things above and not of things on the earth because I am the I. Hallelujah. Oh, you can get excited when you realize that God hears your future in your struggle and that you don't have to fight it because God has prepared every step of the way. What did the Bible say? The steps of a what? Righteous man. Of what? You don't have to worry about what you enter into. You just know that your steps have been ordered. And watch this. Order implies that God had already investigated your journey. He already know the plan that you're going to take. He already know the falls that's going to come. He already know where the pitfalls are. He know where the holes, the dens, and the dives are. He said, but I prepared you because I ordered your steps. As a matter of fact, I'm not taking you around it. I'm taking you through it. I'm taking you through it. When Jesus cried and said, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. That was his flesh talking and not his spirit. Our flesh is constantly telling you, you can't take it. But Paul has declared, he said, when I am weak, then am I strong. But guess what? I can't know how strong I am unless God let me. Somebody said, well, why do I have to get weak? Because God can't prove how strong he is if you stay strong all the time. God, you, you can't know that God will fix something that's broken unless he allows to be broken down. I am a restorer. And we find here in God. All right, in our Bibles, in, the, in Genesis, the 37th chapter. I, I know this another message in one, but that's listen, I can't do like I can't do like some folks. I'm just I'm just not pinpointing. I can't write things down and I stay the script. I ain't never stayed the slave to the script. That ain't how God used me. Those that can do it, fine. I ain't got nothing against you, but that's not how God used me. Because I let God use me the way He used me. That's it. Because when I stand before God, I can't tell him I'm trying to be like Bigelow. Right. 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 He didn't tell me to be like Bigelow. He told me to be like me. Right. And if I be like me, Psalm, uh, Genesis the 37th chapter. Yeah. 
We're going to start at the first verse. When we look at the story of Joseph, when you look at this story, I see my life. You know how I see my life, Rev? Because the things that I thought was happening to me because I had done wrong, right, it was right, God right. prepping me for my future. Yeah. All right, yes, All right. And where I thought I wasn't right or had done something wrong or God was chasing me, he was simply preparing me, but I had to go through the journey in order to get what God had for me. It, it was never that God didn't have it planned for me. It's just that I didn't understand my journey. And most of the time we don't like it. Yes. Genesis 37 1 and said, And Joseph, Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Ziphah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. As we start out in this, they didn't like Joseph because Joseph was a teller teller. Joseph, Joseph just simply told him. I mean, you know, he, he, he just told what he saw. You know, you just got some children. They just tell what they see. Some of them not doing it to be mean. They just tell what they see. You That's did true. it, I'm telling. That's true. Look at somebody and say, don't do nothing that nobody can tell. See, it's one thing to say I'm a teller tell, but it's another thing that you ought not be guilty of what I'm telling. Right. <laughs> Rev, you ain't got to hide if you're doing it in the light. <laughs> Tell God, thank you. And he said, now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw their father loved them more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. What I love about God is God plants us in a place and in a position that's not always comfortable for us. Right. And God has planted our lives where we are. Like I said before, my mom coming from Missouri to California, no, she came because she got married. I, didn't, well, I wasn't the one getting married. She got married and brought us out here. I wasn't trying to leave where I was. All right, now. But guess what, Sister Jewel? I couldn't get what God had for me in Missouri. When he told Abraham, leave the land of the Chaldees and go to the land of earth and go to a land that I will show you. Listen, when God has made a promise, y'all write this down. When God has made a promise, you got to understand God fulfills his promise. Now, what he has not told us is how the journey is going to be. And everything that seemed to happen to us while we're on the way doesn't look like what God said. Now, that's when the enemy comes in to try to prove to you that what he said he did not say and God's not on your side. We get to it. We, we get to it. It's going to get good here in a minute. But we ain't going to finish it all the night, so don't, don't nobody get in a hurry. Don't run off yet. And, and so, Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children. In other, in other words, uh, 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 Jacob, remember, Rachel mm -hmm. was the wife he worked the first seven years for that he did not get. Yeah. Yeah. But he gave him, he gave him who first? Yeah. He gave him Leah. Now, watch this. Leah <laughs> was not his wife. Now, watch God, y'all. God will allow us to experience some things in our life that we that He's promised us that's not part of the promise. And I got to be able to differentiate and know that, listen, that's not the promise. Yeah. Watch it, I'm going to show y'all something. The devil will bring many things your way when God has made a promise to you to make it look like that's what God said it is, and it's not. The devil will camouflage himself, make it look like. That's why all the time God don't talk out loud what he's promised in your life because death, God realized that the devil is a camouflage. He's an illusionist. 
the devil will then begin to make things look like what God said is. That's why sometimes when you're praying and you're praying in the spirit and you're talking to God, God will tell you in your spirit what he said and it will not happen verbally because he don't want the enemy to steal the word that he has for you and don't want the enemy to infiltrate or make it look like it's him and it's not. Amen. That's why my relationship with God is very vital because listen, if I'm not aware, the devil will put on a dress that yes, look like the one that God said it's going to be in. Yes. But it won't be God. Yes, He'll look like, talk like, he may smell like, think like, but it won't be God. That's why my relationship is vital because guess what? My relationship with God will help me know what a counterfeiter is. Yes, I don't care how much you love God. If you don't have the right kind of relationship, the devil will make you accept the counterfeit. Sure will. You'll walk away with that fake one hundred dollar bill, thinking it's real. When you get where you're going, they'll tell you, "Sir, this thing was dead before you ever left. It didn't change in your pocket. It was bad when you got it." So the devil will do that if we're not careful. Also, when we look at, when we look at the journey, as, as we look at how this journey in life started, we're gonna, what we're going to discover with, with, in, this, in the story of Joseph that we haven't really talked about before, we're going to discover the mind of God. As God has hid our future in the struggle, now we begin, as we have a relationship with God, and a close relationship with God, now we're going to begin to discover the mind of God. See, we don't really know the mind of God. We have the word. The word helps us with the mind of God. But then also the relationship God can communicate one on one. Hello, y'all. Because, see, the devil tries to distort what God has written. But when you talk to God in the spirit and you one-on-one -on -one talking to God in the spiritual realm, see, the devil can't infiltrate right, that. Right, right, right. That's why he said men are to always pray. <laughs> see, he can change. He can try to change the written word. Right. But he can't get in the conversation. He can't get in what's in your heart. God got a code. What is that code? Each one of us got a code with God. As our relationship with God gives us an identity with who God is in our lives. That's why you can't believe everything everybody say about you that God said. Uh oh, help me now. You, you can't believe everything what everybody said God said about you. Your relationship with God will give you a code and it'll let you know whether or not that's true. Amen. Hello, y'all. Amen. I don't care if he is a well-known prophet, whoever they say they are. Amen. I tell you what, you better have a relationship with God so God can tell you. Because guess what? If God can tell the prophet to tell me, then God can help me with what the prophet said. Y'all right. right. better hear what I say. Because right. there are lying prophets. Right. And they're not in the street, they're in the church. That's right. All right. All right. <laughs> they, they, they sit in the pews right with you. <laughs> they come to church faithfully just like you. The lying prophet. Amen. There were some of us, you right, Sister Belinda. There are some of us, listen, the devil, the devil comes to church just to deceive you. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. He comes to church to deceive. Yeah. And if he can, if he if he if he if he can get you to believe what he said. He got you. He got you. The path that we take in life, you all, is directed and is guarded by God all the time. Let me say it again. The path that we have in this life is directed and guarded by God all the time. Listen, we didn't get here today because God just started yesterday. No, we did. Do you not know even in our sinful life, uh oh, that God was guarding our life well, of course. in my sinful life yeah. to help me get to where I am now? Yeah. 
because if God had not guarded my life in my sinful life, I could not be where I am today. I would be dead in the graveyard. I know that's right because that's what you're trying to do. So when we look at where has God been, and sometimes people ask the question, where have God been all my life? He has been there all. All the time. <laughs> He's been there all your life. And sometimes we're fussing and complaining about it, but he's been there all our life. Watch this. The diversities, the trials, our struggles, our pains, our losses, our hurts, they confuse our minds with the love that God really has for us. As we go through the cycle of life and all of these things happen to us, it confuses us sometimes to make us believe that God don't care. Right. Or the promise that God has made, He's not doing. Right. That's true. Wow. Yeah. How come it looks like my life is always taking a downward spiral? Yeah. God is with you in your downward spiral. Yeah. On your lowest or low, God has not gone anywhere. He is right there. But guess what? He can't pick me up out of the lowest or low if He got to bring me out. You might be in the lowest of low, but God's something right there, the lowest of low with you. God, you down, I'm down. Right there. Right there. You up, I'm up. Right. Yeah. You lean, I lean. God said, well, uh, you move, I move. Right. Uh, just like that. Yeah. Right there. So when we think we have lost God, or God has lost us, or we no longer have God around us, God said, oh, well, you don't realize I'm going to have to move. You make it. <laughs> and we said, but God, where were you when this happened? God said, I was right there. Right there. <laughs> so then you said, well, God, why didn't you do something? God said, watch this. Watch God. God said, I can't do something then when I've already designated you to go through. All right. So I can't pull you out of it when I said you got to go through it. So God said, what I'm doing is I'm making the way plain for you that you can follow me. Knowing that I'm building my future should make me more attentive to my forward progress. Can I say it again? Knowing that I'm building my future should make me more attentive to my forward progress. Watch God, y'all. God hid it inside of me so it would never be lost. But watch this. If I don't seek God, it'll never be discovered. It'll never be discovered. I know that's right. <sighs> Can I say that again? Say it again. God hid it inside of us where no one could steal it. That's right. No one could take it. No one could say it was theirs. And no one said they gave it to you. No. But if I don't seek God, it can be hidden and never discovered. Right. Here's the devil. The word. enemy does not want you to discover what God has hidden on the inside of you. That's why he allowed all the trials and the struggles in life that you have to make you stop looking at what's in. And he starts making you look at what's without. That's why some people are so busy looking out, they can't see what's in. And what's in is where you are. What's out is a figment of your imagination. Oh, it's counterfeit. It's an illusion. What I see outside is really not what it is. But what's on the inside of me can never be taken. So what he does he clouds our outward view so we'll stop looking in. Mm. Look at someone say, look in first. Look in first. And your outlook will be better. I know that's right. mm. If you wonder why folks' outlook is so bad, it's because they haven't looked in yet. <laughs> you always got a horrible word because you haven't looked in. So now 
Now let's go to Isaiah 55 and 8. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and 8. We we'll, we'll yet talk about what's, what's here in our future, but we want to talk about God for a minute because we want to see what God is, what the mind of God is concerning us. Isaiah 55 and 8 and 9. We read it before. We heard it before. When he said, for my thoughts are not, neither are Said the Lord. Nine verse for what? For as the so and my now, now, now watch this. Even though Isaiah 58 and 9 here was dealing with God dealing with forgiveness and pardoning uh, Israel for what they have done, what God was establishing, and as we're dealing with our future, what we got to establish is God's ways is not our ways, and God's thoughts are not my thoughts. So what you think is not what God is thinking. <laughs> and what you're seeing is not what God saw. That's why the enemy's job is to change your vision of what you saw so that he cannot, so you cannot discover your future. Because see, if he cloud your view where you can't see, you'll never see yourself where God made you. I'm going to say this. You are not a misfit and you're not a mishap. The devil will make you feel like you are a misfit and a mishap. You were a mistake. Guess what you are? I Look at someone and say, I am not a mistake. I am God's promise. Now, now watch it. Whether you like me or not, I'm God's promise. I am. Woo! I'm God's promise. You can't change what God has promised through me. You can't change it whether you like me or not. Right, right, right. Oh, my. Oh man, that's what the enemy wants us to do, not discover who we are, because he always many times he's seen what God has said we are. And then he goes and said, Let me change it. How many when he went before God and before Job, he said, Yeah, Job only served you for long. He only liked you for what you're doing for me, what he got. If you take everything he got, I'll make him curse you to your face. Now watch this, y'all. Let me tell y'all something about God. Do you not know that God trusts you? Oh, God. Do y'all not know that God trusts us? What did he tell Satan? Go and try him. But don't touch his life. You can take everything he got. Yeah, y'all better listen to what I'm saying. Right. Listen, y'all don't realize God have invested in us. Yes, and God is not going to give Satan the authority to come and try me knowing I'm going to fail. God have invested in us. And God have a promise in us. And God have a trust in us. And God said the reason he's coming is because I trust you with what you got. Oh my God, y'all y'all better y'all better hear what I'm saying. God said, I trust you with what I've given you. Yes. He approved it to me. So guess what? So the reason it's coming your way is not because God don't trust you, it's because he does. Oh my God. Why Satan is trying to make you feel guilty for your trials and for your circumstances. God said they're only coming because I trust you. Do y'all know how big that is? It's coming my way. And then somebody outside of you that don't know what God is doing with your life will tell you, say, wow, I thought God loved you. Uh -huh. huh? Somebody tell you, I thought God cared about you. But then because you know, you can smile. And someone will say, Sister Cheryl, why are you smiling? Because you just don't know. The reason I'm going through what I'm going through because God trusts me. Trust me. Wow. Woo! Y'all listen. That's a hard trust, but I'm going to tell you what. God said, listen, you can do all things through me because I've strengthened you for the task. So when the enemy try to make it bad, God have already 
made it good. All right, let's go to all the famous scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. Come on, we, we just get to the mind of God before we get into the struggle. Jeremiah 29 and 11. We didn't read it before, but we're going to read it again. It's important as we realize what our future is and that God holds our future and is in our struggle. It's important for us to realize what's in the mind of God. Jeremiah 29 and 11 said, for, for what? For I know thoughts of what? And not of what? And to what? Watch this, you all. God never brings you evil. No, you don't have to. Uh oh. Well, someone said, well, Sister Gibson, why do you want to go through evil? God did never say it wouldn't come. No, he didn't. He said that I would not give you evil. Uh oh, y'all. So, guess what the enemy said? The enemy says when the evil come, why is God bringing you the evil? Right. Yeah. He didn't bring it. No. No, he didn't. Of course, he allowed it, but he didn't bring it. But watch it, and because he allowed it to come, God said, I made provision for you. Yes, you made a way to I thought about you long before the evil came, and I made provision for you to get out. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yes, he did. Let me tell you something. The enemy attempts to set us up with the promises that God has made to us. Yeah. But it's simply because we don't remember the word. Right. The word said, my people are destroyed for a lack. I believe mean, is that in Habakkuk? For a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a, watch this, it's not how much you pray. Mm -hmm. right. It's not how much you read. Is how much do you retain of what God is to you? Because watch it, if I don't retain what God is to me, the enemy will beat me down with the very, very word that I should be living by. How many of y'all, the enemy has beat you up with God's word? How many beat you up with the word that you should have been living by? You know why he was beating you up with the word you should have been living by? It's because you were not trusting the word that you say you had. So he took that same word and said, Did, like he told Jesus, did God say, or if you throw yourself down, or if you this, if you, yeah, he said all of that, but listen, you the one doing the talking, God ain't talking right now, that's the devil talking, look at somebody say, that's the devil talking. Why would the Lord tell me to turn the stone in the grave when he can rain manna? <laughs> why would I have to? Why would I have to take some wine and drink it when he when he can just make it rain? The enemy, the counselor, wants to take everything that God. Has. So he said, "For I know the thoughts I think towards you." Now, watch this. What God is saying is that I'm monitoring your moves. Yeah, if you know the thoughts. I'm monitoring your moves. I know you have that appointment. And I know you're going to be disappointed. But guess what? I am. Am I bigger than your disappointments? Yes. Am I greater than your disappointments? Yes. And I last longer than your disappointments. <laughs> I never end. This is God. All right. Why are you in Jeremiah? Go to Jeremiah one and five. Now we we gonna really get to we get to the mind of God before we dig into this lesson on next week. Jeremiah one and five. Mm. Watch God. As he help us with the future that's here and the struggle we're about to have. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. What he said, what reading you all? Stop right there. Before I formed you in where? I what? Wow. 
Thank you, Lord. Woo! It's not by mistake. And I'm not a mistake. Look at yourself and say, I am not a mistake. I am a purpose. I am not a mistake. <laughs> Before I fall thee in the belly, I knew thee. Read. And I what? Jeremiah 1 and 5. And I what? And I ordained thee. A prophet. I'm going to let y'all chew on this one. Before I formed thee in the belly. Right. Mm. Lord, how much he knew. He knew me. He knew yo, me. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah. Ooh, thank you. I'm not mama's mistake. Thank you. No, you ain't nobody's mistake. I may be daddy's baby, but I'm not, I'm not mama's mistake. <laughs> but when it comes to God, yeah. I was purpose. And guess what? Everything God has has been born. That's right. Everything God has has been born, meaning that God has already birthed it. Yes. Wow. Before I formed you, I knew you. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified. Watch this. If God, watch it. If God have done all of that, why do I have to go through all I have to go through? I have to go through all I got to go through because He already sanctified me and He knew me. He has prepared me. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to go that way because it is written. So it is written. So it is done. Stop fighting then your struggle. Yeah. Embrace it. And I close with that oh, no. on tonight. That's as far as we get. We, 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 listen, I'm not in no hurry with this. We got, we got a lot. It's a, it's a lot of juice to squeeze out of this grape. We got a lot of wine to make, and we ain't gonna make it all in one night. So you all take this right here and this substance tonight. This a lot to chew on here, right here, y'all. This right here is enough all to change your life right now. Folk look at me like I don't belong. Real people look at you like you don't belong. As a matter of fact, some people will tell you, you don't belong here. But oh, God said, I purpose you to be here. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.